say somebody realizes they have a problem, either it's definitive, they've gone and gotten their, their insulin tested in a lab, or, you know, they're just judging by some of the other symptoms, the skin tags, the blood pressure, stuff like that. And they decide, you know, it's time to take control of this and, and I want to do something about it. What are the biggest needle movers? Where do they start? Yeah, yeah. The biggest move is controlling carbohydrates in the diet. 100% absolute definitive. Now, actually, let me also add, a person could just start fasting, but I kind of put that into uh, controlling carbohydrates. In fact, minute for minute, moving the needle the most, fasting is going to move the needle the most, no question. The only problem in my mind with fasting is that too often people will just shrug their shoulders and go on a fast, not without a plan. And in my view, how you end the fast is more important than how long you fast. And that's what I mean by having a plan. A person needs to know, how am I going to end my fast? Because unfortunately, sometimes people just turn it into some kind of glorious binge purge cycle or a glamorous version of it where they fast for 24 hours, get to a super point of hunger, and then just binge on a bunch of junk food. Well, that's not the way to do it, of course. And the net effect of that is not going to be a gain. So if someone can engage in intermittent fasting, and couple that with a low carbohydrate diet, then you are, you, that is a one two punch. You are doing everything, you're cooking with gas, you're doing everything you can in order to, to lower insulin and improve insulin sensitivity. And the results are fantastically fast. Uh, Jesse, it's appropriate for me and you, two Canucks, to mention another Canuck. I'm a good friends with a guy named Jason Fung who um, is a clinician in Ontario. And he's kind of the godfather of the modern day fasting interest, the modern day fasting movement. And he can get type two diabetics off of all of their medications in just weeks by engaging in well-structured fasting, including low carb diet, mind you. So it's, this is something that can be, that can move the needle. Speaking of moving, moving the needle, man, this is, uh, moving the needle. So fasting and controlling carbohydrates. Um, and, and this doesn't need to happen with calorie counting. That's part of the beauty of it. This is not a strategy that is based on low calorie. No, far from it. When it's time to eat, eat until you're full. When you're not hungry, don't eat. And then sometimes you'll push through a little bit of hunger to engage in, in a fast again from time to time. But if a person is fasting, and they're following three rules based on the three macronutrients of the diet, they're going to do it. Control carbohydrates. So focus on fruits and vegetables. Don't get your carbohydrates from um, bags and boxes with barcodes. Prioritize protein. Make sure you're getting enough high quality protein. And that by high quality, I mean from, from animal sources. And three, don't be afraid of fat. Fat is a natural food. We need it. There are literally fats that are essential to the human diet. Fats and proteins always come together in nature. That's how we should eat them. So don't be afraid of the fat. Let that fat come liberally with the protein that you're trying to prioritize. And if that's if a person's following kind of those four pillars, fasting, control carbs, prioritize protein, don't fear fat, they will move the needle and the insulin resistance will be gone, usually in weeks, in months perhaps. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. If a person's following kind of those four pillars, fasting, control carbs, prioritize protein, don't fear fat, they will move the needle and the insulin resistance will be gone, usually in weeks, in months perhaps.